The fall of society was generally something that we would only see in movies, but if MIT scientists are correct, we will see it happen not on a screen, but right here on Earth. We're near the end of our development of society, which has been going on for about 2,000 years, and we've reached levels of prosperity which carry the seeds of disruption. Their study, conducted a long time ago, concluded that a collapse will occur in 2040. I was never a genius at math, but I think that means we have 17 years left? the population will diminish right back here less than it was in the year 1900 and at this stage round about the year 2040 2050 civilized life as we know it on this planet will cease to exist now I've heard people talk about collapses and doom and gloom predictions before by 2050 we will be just a few people who control a few things will be okay all others will suffer in an immense manner by MIT a reputable institute of technology, scientists in a system dynamics multivariant study, this is different to the regular pundits. Although we showed many different scenarios, all of them show that growth stops sometime in the period of 2020 to let's say 2060. So soon. Will the current ideas about green industry avoid collapse? No possibility. Absolutely no possibility of that. If these scientists are correct, which I'm not convinced of yet, what do they think the collapse is going to look like? Will it come from World War Three? An AI takeover? Will it be starvation and lakes drying up? Is it going to be like 1929 Great Depression, but 10 times worse? But to see what it will look like, first we need to see why they're predicting this. Way back in 1970, a team of MIT scientists got together to study the future of humanity. They had this concern that civilization was grown too fast on a planet that had finite resources. Their question, was there a limit to societal growth or can we just innovate our way into almost infinite growth? Today we consume more than yesterday. Our children, if they live as we do, will use up resources more than twice as fast as we do. Such growth threatens to use up all the resources the Earth has to offer us. Even if we solve problems like pollution, growth within a century or so would lead to widespread famine and social chaos. Our new technologies tend to disrupt ecological cycles, to break them. Because of that, we are on a suicidal course. So the test was conducted using these five basic factors. Population, agricultural production, non-renewable resource depletion, industrial output and pollution generation. They wanted to see what it would look like if we continue past trends into the future. Would it be a collapse, a slow decline, a plateau based on our current habits? Now the first model that they produced was nicknamed the business as usual scenario. What happens if we keep going business as usual and make no changes. I guess the title of all of the headlines kind of gives us the answer. As the century unfolds, industry grows, as does food production and population. But we're using up all our raw materials, the limited metals and fuel in the earth. These run out. Without fuel and metals for the factories, industry collapses. And without petrol and electricity, food production falls too. There's no food and massive unemployment. So the population falls, people are dying. Essentially, we run out of natural resources, we all begin to starve, <laughs> and society collapses. Oh, thank you MIT for that very rosy forecast. How optimistic of you. And then just to make sure we all stay equally depressed, a KPMG analyst followed this up in 2020 and concluded that we're on track as per MIT's forecast. They warned that business as usual would lead to global collapse. I thought it would be interesting to see how that model had fared. After all, we had a couple of decades worth of empirical data. And we're most closely aligned with business as usual too. Then that means that right now we are at peak welfare. Okay, this is all getting a bit much. Either there is something wrong with MIT studies and Gaia's follow-up research, or we should start preparing for end times ASAP, start buying up cans of beans, toilet paper, find some safe place to avoid the collapse. Is this why the super rich are putting millions of dollars into the luxury doomsday bunkers? Billionaire preppers, a high-tech way to avoid the apocalypse. Welcome to the survival condo. Inside, this 54,000 square foot complex boasts everything you could need to live through the end of days. Maybe, maybe not. But 
At the time of making the study, the fourth scientist knew that there was going to be many skeptics and doubters. And one of the obvious issues is, well, what happens if we discover more resources? Find more oil reserves, more resource rich mines, maybe Mr. Beast plants 20 billion extra trees instead of 20 million. So the scientists doubled the resource base for their second model, which they thoughtfully named Business As Usual 2. Will there still be a collapse if we assume double Earth's known resources? So they ran the computer to see what would happen if we solved the resources problem that caused the crisis in the first run. This time, natural resources used carefully run down slowly, but industry continues to grow. This industrial growth produces a serious pollution problem. Pollution attacks both people and plants. Crops cannot grow, and farming starts to fail. The population starts to collapse when people die of hunger and pollution. Industry, without a workforce, collapses too. In this case, the model shows we don't collapse from depleting natural resources, but we do collapse from excessive pollution. The pollution destroys food production, and then we all die of hunger. Well, not all of us, but a proportion of us. If I didn't have depression already, I'm sure I've got it now after reading the study. Their main conclusion is that we're growing too fast as a society, and there's not enough food or natural resources or unpolluted spaces to keep going the way we are. There cannot be uh, indeterminate growth on a finite planet. The world is running out of, uh, of many things that it needs. The grim truth that I think we're not facing is that our civilization is now beginning to collapse. But humans are innovative, aren't we? If a problem comes, we find a solution. If it starts to rain, we build a shelter. If it got dark, we invented the light bulb. Heck, we invented a flying metal object to reverse the seas. If you watch TV, it may look like we're dumb as a plank of wood, but overall, we're pretty smart and creative. Surely we can innovate solutions to Earth's growing pains? Uh, according to MIT, yes and no. They conducted a third scenario of the study which they named Comprehensive Technologies, where they tested the outcome if we have incredibly high future technological innovation. So if we go by the original study, they said no, even with a hundred Elon Musks, we'll still see a massive collapse in food and outputs. However, they did do a 30 year update in the year 2000, where they said actually our initial test was a bit off. They made a new test, which concludes if we have comprehensive technologies around 2050, we're still going to see an overshoot and collapse in industrial output and a depletion of resources. But it won't be like that bad and our food resources will recover. So thank you MIT for at least a somewhat optimistic forecast. Elon Musk though, you gotta get to work. We need you to start reproducing more. 10 kids, no, 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 that's not enough. Make that 1000 replicas and the collapse won't be that bad. But even so, if we do have high technological innovation, MIT say there is still a collapse intrinsically baked in. Is there any scenario, MIT, where we don't see a collapse? Apparently there's only one solution, and I'm going to tell you one thing, you're not going to like it. They found that if you controlled everything, including industrial production, no crisis emerged. What is being suggested is that the only way to ensure the future for our grandchildren is to stop getting richer. Only then will there be the resources and the unpolluted world that they will need to survive. There's going to have to be a shift away from an emphasis on material goods to one on the social services. The fourth iteration of the study tests what happens if society shifts from growth to social welfare focused. If so, MIT's models show we'll see more of an S-curve scenario as opposed to the traditional Gaussian overshoot and collapse. In this scenario around 2040, instead of a sharp downturn, things stabilize and plateau. Population matures, industrial output maintains itself, food goes up and then stabilizes, and pollution dies down, and resources get used up at a more manageable rate. But this will mean the world and all of the nations in it change their governance systems from growth focused to social welfare focused. And when I say the world, they mean all, all of the countries have to do this, not just one, which means losing some sovereignty and all adopting a similar way of thinking. Dr. Alexander King, 
director of the World Bank and the United Nations OECD. Dr King, now you're describing the world as a closed system where all these things are interrelated, and yet the government, the control of the system is by individual nation states. Now, how do you convince them to cooperate? The sovereignty of these nations is no longer as absolute as it was. There's a gradual diminishing, whittling away of sovereignty, little bit by little bit. Uh, especially, of course, in the smaller countries, where it's more obvious. But the bigger countries have to do a good deal of this by agreeing with into international arrangements for uh, the law of the seas, or for the limits of fishing, or for control of, uh, of the wavelengths in radio, and 101 other things. Now, I have to say, optically, it looks bad when they say, we need to control everything, we need to run the system, and that's how we're going to avoid a collapse. The only thing you need to do is limit your growth and national independence. And if you don't, you're intrinsically bad and destroying the planet and going to cause a collapse. Yeah, yeah, okay, no worries. I'll eat the bugs, you dine on the steak, I'll own nothing and be happy. Anything else you want me to do? I'm not exactly going to be the first person in line to sign up. I'm all for reducing the piles of waste and pollution and trying to keep our lakes pristine and natural resources plentiful, but I wouldn't mind keeping my sovereignty, thank you. I'd like some freedom, please. Now, I gotta say, after reading this report, it didn't exactly leave me hopeful about the future of humanity. You're telling me that if we don't change to a social service oriented society from a growth one, then we're gonna experience some type of collapse? But human beings have always tried to grow, always. Whether we were hunter gatherers building a tribe or in business doing anything to grow our profit margins, it's almost instinctive to us. So are we just destined for a collapse? And if so, what might that collapse look like? I know the fall of Rome came from invasions and high inflation, Egypt from a 150 year mega drought, dinosaurs became extinct while they say from an asteroid. So MIT, how is this collapse going to come about? It seems obvious to us that decline, if it does come, will be experienced at different times and in different ways in various societies. The United States might conceivably have a natural resource problem while Japan could fail to cure its pollution problems and be led into difficulty that way. Some of the less industrialized areas at the same time might be having a food crisis. It's almost like they're saying, pick your poison, which one do you want? I always thought that society would crumble from the degeneration of morals and then just a slow migration out of the poorly run countries, but apparently no, it's not going to be as pleasant as that. And it doesn't exactly leave you feeling great <laughs> about humanity's future when they consistently say things will fall apart. The world is in a completely unstable situation and is likely to fall to pieces if it doesn't stop growing. And I know we're meant to think, oh, MIT scientists, they're the leaders in their field, we've got to trust their prediction. However, going through the study, there were some things that put me off on it and therefore put me off on their prediction. Here's why I have a bit more hope for humanity than they do. The sneaky thing that I noticed was they actually changed their original prediction and no one's called them out on this before. A lot of the original graphs from the 1970s study predicted a collapse at the start of 2000. They weren't crystal clear on the timeline x-axis, but you can see the collapse comes from around 2000, 2010, 2020. And then when 2000 actually came along, they wrote a new book and they changed their prediction and they pushed it back to 2040. Since the mid 60s, we've been on a campaign to demoralize people. I think it started with the Club of Rome types who claimed that the world was overpopulated and that we we're all headed to hell in a handbasket, and there's no evidence that any of that is true. I mean, the idea was that by the year 2000, everyone would be starving to death. Since the dawn of human time, people have warned about the collapse of humankind. Assyrians warned on a clay tablet in 2800 BC that Earth is degenerate in these later days. There are signs that the world is speedily coming to an end. 
Thomas Malthus predicted in his 1798 essay that population growth would eventually outstrip the availability of resources, leading to widespread famine and societal collapse. Pope Innocent III predicted that the world would end 666 years after the rise of Islam in 1618. We might have 100 years on Earth <laughs> what? at the rate we're going. <laughs> Reality is that human beings love a good prediction, and most of these past predictions have been wrong. The MIT study was done 50 years ago, and things have actually gone pretty well since then. World hunger has dramatically reduced, with almost two-thirds less people undernourished in developing nations. Infant survival is up 70%, life expectancy is 11% higher, and almost everyone has a smartphone and access to an unfathomable amount of information that past kings could only dream of. So yes, population has exponentially grown at a crazy rate. They were right on that. Population now doubles in 30 years. The problem is that it can exponentially fall too. Now some academics are saying underpopulation, not overpopulation, will be a major problem. And yet so many people, including smart people, think that there are too many people in the world and think that the population is growing out of control. It's completely the opposite. Please look at the numbers. Uh, if people don't have more children, civilization is going to crumble. I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Not explosion, collapse. And the decrease in population will not come from not enough food and then starvation, thank goodness, but from choice. We are choosing to have less kids than we were 50 years ago. Now, I'm 28 and most of my friends don't have kids. Some don't even want kids. My parents' generation everyone wanted at least two or three kids minimum i mean my grandpa had six kids who themselves had four or five kids of their own so there's been a huge cultural shift that's occurred we may have a crisis on our hand but it's not exactly in the way that mit predicted we are going to face in the mid part of the century a, and particularly the latter part of the century a demographic implosion the likes of which we haven't seen including the black plague Oh, well, I've thought for at least 10 years that the biggest problem in 50 years will be that there's just not enough people. 